Hey everyone, what's up? And guess what I got? Kicker 12, that's passive radiator. That's 12, that's passive radiator. This is a 2 ohm box. You can buy this from like Crutchfield and places. I have this Audio Audison AP1D. It's a monoblock subwoofer amplifier. I got my LC2I, which is how I'm going to grab my signal. And I'm going to get some bass in the back of this 2019 Mercedes GLA AMG 45. And what we're dealing with here is the Hardin Carden um, stereo system. This is a scrap piece of wood that I got for free that I might need to build a little tiny amp rack. And here is the factory amp. This is a big, little, six inch subwoofer. It goes underneath the amp. We're gonna leave this in. We're probably gonna take this out and put the amp and the crossover or signal gathering piece here. And we're gonna just take this wire that's plugged in to the subs out and tap that and feed that into the LCI, LC2I, and then get the amp. Now the hardest part is gonna be running the wire from the battery to the back. And when I say hard, it's not hard, it's just a lot of panels to pop off. And I'm gonna run this old four gauge wire that I have. There's no need to go buy a new eight gauge wire kit when this works just fine and I think I can fit it through there without a problem, more the better. So stay tuned, I'll show you popping some panels off, build a little tiny amp rack out of that. And uh, we'll go from there with the install and get some actual bass in this thing. All right, once you pop these panels off, you can see they're just held in with these push down into these little grooves. Easy, but not easy to pull them out, use some pry tools. Up underneath the footwell is a little plug. You're gonna to want to take that out and stick something in here. Mine is a little gripper tool. And then, as you can see, I just fed it up and it popped out right there. Now I'm gonna get some of this attached to it and pull it through. Now, here it is me feeding it and I'm gonna pull this through so I'll have the right amount left on the other side. All right, the little plug that goes from the firewall, it goes in from the inside this way. So I drilled a little hole in it right in the middle, and now I'm going to press the end of this wire through it and feed it through and get it snugged back in. This should be pretty tight. If not, you may need to add a little silicone around it to seal it up, but it should be real tight the way it is. All right, so I wanted to take the my bottom seat cushion out. You got these little things that go where the tie down is. They have a little clip so you just kind of got to get in there and lift that up a little flathead screwdriver and pop one side, pop the other side, and they come right in and they'll snap right back in. I did that so I could run this wire through here and up through here through a little factory hole. And I also, while I was doing this, I ran this uh, phone cord that's going to be the base knob. And I started snapping this all back together. Let me go up to the front. Now, like I was saying, these the seals just press in. To, to this spot, no, actually this spot right here. Um, when you're snapping this all back together, you really wanna make sure that that little clip right there right by my fingernail is locking and holding this thing in. Um, you gotta push and sometimes you gotta lift this little thin piece of plastic that's right here, not this rubber, to get that to snap. And even the carpet kind of snaps in over these two to hold it all in place and we got this all put back together now I got to decide where I'm gonna put this little base knob my four gauge wire back here I didn't want it going over that lip so I drilled a hole there's already a factory hole on the other side I double insulated taped it plus this thick jacket and it's not gonna be moving that would be best if it had a grommet I don't have one working with what I have ground took these bolts off raised that up sanded the whole entire metal um, of the black and the white, put an O-ring on it, clamped it down to it. Hopefully that's a good enough ground. Little engine noise, maybe, I doubt it. The isolator usually takes care of that. If it happens, I'll reground it. Um, I reused some of this wiring from the old car. So basically what I did was I tapped into the power and ground um, 
power and ground are going to be that those are both going into the big amp and then i made a little jumper wire that's going to feed this um and then for remote turn on I, i'm using the power sense uh when it senses a signal through the speaker wires it should auto come on okay so next thing that's a little more complicated this is the wires that go into the sub so what i did was i used uh one of these type of strippers where it can strip the end of wire or i know it's hard to see here but this is me just wrapping the wire around and this is the solder and the solder is sucked up into it i just didn't put it on the top and that makes a nice tight connection because the wire won't spin around on it or nothing so it's solid all right so i just got to make sure everything worked this week no issues and then i made this little piece of wood it's gonna fit down in here now i gotta do something with this wood make it look nice all right guys here is the amp little rack thingy whatever you want to call it all done uh just made this out of cardboard first to fit in um it extends a little bit like there's a little lip right here so it sits on top of this 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 point and that point uh level and uh, i don't feel like putting any screws down into the wheel well i know this isn't amazing but i'm gonna double side tape this down with some sticky foam tape right here right here right here and over there over there and uh I got the amp all screwed down, the LC2i all screwed down, uh, the wires, they are where they are. I, it lets me keep my spare, this is the fix a flat baloney that comes with the car. And this is all gonna, I gave it a quick coat of black, I told you that earlier. This just sits down. And here is the sub box. You've seen the Kicker 12 box before in uh, many cars I've done. And what's really neat about this here, let me hit pause and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so this is the sub box. So to make this simple, I could have laid it on the floor this way. I could have laid it, it fits this way, but then it takes up floor space. So I just like this. It's very subtle when you're walking up to the car. Nobody really knows it's there per se. The seats still fold down. So what I did was I took a Velcro strap and I screwed it into the side of the box. And then I used the little child restraint things and fed it through just like that as i'm getting close to the end of the video here i just wanted to kind of do a wrap on things to show you how the final product ended up here's that four gauge wire coming in i am going to put some loom over this i got a, a inline blade 20 amp fuse and this just runs up to the positive terminal underneath here it fits you just got to make sure you put it right on the terminal like right on the stud not on the past it because those are fused then when we get back to the back, here's what it looks like when you open up the trunk. Uh, very stealth. Sorry about this wind here today. Uh, but the sub box, like I was saying, showing you, is just Velcroed with these two straps. And this makes it very, very, very tight. And the base performance out of that is excellent. Uh, what I was happening on the floor was it was getting tons of vibration from the floor itself. Now I'm going to fold down the seats. They fold down right with um, the sub box still attached. Uh, I do need to do it from the inside, so I'm going to pause this for a second, and then I'll show you the floor. So as you can see, even the seats still fold down just fine. You can see that kicker emblem right there, and that's the wire run up to the quick terminal. Well, let me show you what I did down here on the floor. This is a stock hatch, and I was able to leave anything in here. And like I showed you, that piece of wood that I cut, it's just double-sided tape down. I didn't want to go to any extreme and drilling too many holes in here. Here's where that four gauge comes in, and then that jumps the power and the ground wire with a little feed over here to this. And then this feed right here is these four wires that were plugged into here where I soldered it in, taped that all up, and that feeds right over to here in. And then it goes through your processing, and then this is your full range audio out they call it base out, but it literally is full range or it's a very high frequency. So I had to put an inline filter and I think this is filtered to 125 Hertz and down. Um, and that feeds right in here to the one input that this amp has. Um, other than that, this has um, what they call it. This says remote out and that actually, whenever it senses the speaker leads coming in, it triggers it's called a trigger and this triggers the re remote turn on for the amplifier so i have made sure that this shuts down after a few minutes of turning the car off 
um, it does not stay on permanently, so it's not draining the battery, which is good. Um, but yeah, like so here's that speaker wire going up. It's a little bit of access tucked down underneath the seat there, and then it goes up there. So yeah, that's very simple to do back here. Um, you know, in closing, I didn't have to cut anything up here in the trunk. Uh, I was able to leave the spare tire thing. The bass response is uh, phenomenal. It is a lot of bass. Um, a single 12 with about 500 watts RMS to it um, with a good clean signal. It's doing really good. Um, I was able to turn the bass down on the system to almost zero on the built-in EQ of the car and the doors and the tweets and stuff up there keep up just fine. Uh, those may be an upgrade in the future. Um, so they're a little bit cleaner sound, but I don't think I'll be amplifying them. So that's a wrap on the video. If you made it this far, definitely it's time to hit that like and subscribe button for more builds on the Mercedes as I keep going through and doing lots of fun stuff for the AMG GLA 45. Keep tuned. See ya.